Hi, I'm Dr. DeMichael. I am originally from the East Coast and have come here from Nampa, Idaho. So we are absolutely in love with Idaho and I have been a doctor now for over 20 years. So having lots of pain and heavy menstrual cycles is probably one of the top issues that we see. And this is a big topic. So I'm actually going to incorporate a lot of other topics into this. So I want you to understand I don't wear I brought your pictures. Um, so what we're talking about irregular cycle, this is again the classic cycle that we are experiencing. People are experiencing irregular heavy cycles. They're doing what they want when they want. And what you're seeing is a growth of the lining. Now, a heavy cycle is an imbalance between the estrogen and the progesterone. All, our hormone is constantly balanced. Our bodies are constantly balancing these two hormones. Estrogen is the one that makes our lining grow. Progesterone keeps it thinner. So, all our, it's, if your periods are too heavy, we're having a little bit higher estrogen level than necessary. Why that concerns me is because estrogen affects other parts of our body. We, and many of us, know that estrogen is uh, too high of a level is cause of uterine and breast cancer. And that is important because estrogen is, cell, is stored in our fat cells. So irregular periods and or no periods is could be just how, you're, how you are and how your body is and how little or more estrogen that you carry. Now one of the big things, especially on the news now because there's some more medications to treat this, is painful cycle is endometriosis. This can cause terrible pain. Um, what it is, and I'm going to tell you the honest truth here, we don't know for sure what causes it. The main theories are, does it go through your lymphatic system, out of uterus to your lymph nodes, to your bloodstream? The most common idea is it is going right out of your uterus, out of your fallopian tubes, and these lining of your uterus is implanting in various parts of your body. So think about it. When you bleed, these are all bleeding. And what the problem with that is, it's causing scarring, it's causing infertility, it's causing chronic pain because you're literally internally bleeding. So this is an issue that is very common and one we have many treatments for as well. If PID um, is another issue that causes painful periods. And P PID is something, you know, sexually transmitted disease that you may have symptoms of abnormal discharge, pain, heavier periods, bleeding between your periods, and abnormal odor, a lot of things that are wrong. And even if you change a partner, I recommend that you have a new partner maybe you know we should get tested just to make sure there's nothing well you get tested of course that there's nothing causing a problem and that you want to know that everything's okay with your body because this is a severe case of what PID can do it can climb into your uterus it can cause abscesses and infections through here we'll try to treat this medically but sometimes it can lead to infertility as well so we don't want that to happen so if you ever have any questions I just want to get check and there are plenty of people who Come in yearly, new partner, just let's make sure everything's okay. I think that's a great idea. Painful cycle. This is a common problem in women after menopause. And you're probably looking at this one, what am I looking at? Cervical stenosis. So you see that little tiny dot there? Remember when you were pregnant, that little dot actually enlarged to 10 centimeters to push a baby out. When you don't have estrogen, estrogen affects the cervix, the vagina, the vulva, all this area and the tissue literally shrinks and can close off the opening. But some women just still develop some fluid in their uterus. And so we have to actually open that site, that stenosis and release that fluid so they're not having that constant pain. Our body's natural way to get rid of anything in the uterus that they feel is foreign is to push it out, which leads us to polyps. So endometrial polyps are also a cause of pain and of bleeding. The best way I like to equate this with patients is you go to a colonoscopy, you get a polyp, you're having your polyps removed. It's a teardrop sized tissue that can grow anywhere within the lining, even on the cervix, but they're very vascular. So they will bleed when they want to bleed. And even sometimes just the course of process of intercourse can cause them to bleed. They're almost always benign, but they can turn cancerous. So if you have these, and especially if you want to have a child, this will interrupt it, get them taken out. Fibroids is another big question. Like what in the world is a fibroid? A fibroid is a benign, in most cases, growth of tissue, of connective tissue, and 
of smooth muscle tissue. And what I'm showing you here is the different locations of where a fibroid can occur. Why this is important is you can see a picture here of the lining. And if a fibroid is at that lining, how our body works is that when you have a period, you stop bleeding because the tissue contracts and it literally squeezes off those blood vessels. Well, how's it going to do it if you have a big mass in the way? And so this is an issue for bleeding. It's an issue for pain because you have something foreign sitting in your body. What's it going to do? Try to push it out. And it also it will be, could be an issue for infertility as well. The next issue I want to discuss with you is something called adenomyosis. Painful and heavy periods. So the lining of the uterus that we're all familiar with, we expect to slough off every month, give us a normal period, sometimes can do things that we don't want it to do. And why does it do it? Again, unfortunately, the cause is unknown. So what you're seeing here is that simple lining in a normal uterus grows, sheds off, you have a period. It can actually grow into the walls of the muscle. This is, this is interesting because this is a very common problem, but women don't understand why is this happening to me. It's, so essentially, when you bleed, these spots are all bleeding. Your uterus essentially becomes a big bruise. So you can imagine intercourse becomes terribly painful. You have a heavy sensation. You have heavier periods. And it can progress, and what it usually does is progress from a cycle to beyond my cycle to it's all the time I feel this pain. And so a very common problem, but one that not many women know about. And endometriosis seems to be the big one that people are familiar with. Let's look a little bit more now at the, some of the diagnostic procedures in which we can use to find out what is causing this. So of course, you know, we have hormones as a cause. So you will get a full hormonal evaluation, including an evaluation of your blood glucose, because blood glucose is a hormone and will throw off the insulin, which will go to your ovaries and make everything go haywire. The, um, the next issue is that an ultrasound, very important. But beyond just an ultrasound, is something called the sonohistogram. So when we do an ultrasound, we are seeing the uterus smack together. You see a, a lining in the middle, we call that the endometrial stripe. But we can't see what's inside of it because it's flat. Your uterus shouldn't be full of fluid unless there's a baby there. And so what we do is something called a sonohistogram. This device is actually we're putting a little tube in there and we're actually filling it with water. So once we do that, we enlarge the uterus. Is there a polyp there? Is there a fibroid there? What is that? You know, that needs to come out because that could be causing for, and, and I'll be honest with you, it's almost always a fibroid or, or a uh, polyp, but it has to come out because this is what your body's trying to reject. It's causing you to bleed. We need to eliminate this. We need to make sure everything is benign and get it out. The other thing that is actually, we used to do something called endometrial biopsy. And, and we still do to a degree, but, um, but what that really is, is very similar to the picture of the sonar histogram. What, but instead of going in here is a little device that actually scrapes the lining of the uterus. It's 10 seconds of discomfort, take ibuprofen beforehand and you'll be fine. The new recommendations by the American College of OBGYN are something called a myoshore. And I will explain to you the difference in what I've actually experienced because of this. So the myoshore, we're actually going in with a little device that has a little kind of small blade on it, but as even with the lining of the uterus, it will go in and it will, you can see inside the uterus. You can remove any polyps, any thickened lining for evaluation. You can remove small fibroids. So we can remove quite a bit through this procedure. And the nice thing about this is you're not having, you're not awake for it, that's one positive. But the, the best positive is I'm seeing everything. And I just recently had a patient who had a beautiful lining here and then something right there and that ended up being cancer. So if I had just gone in blindly with an endometrial biopsy, God, I, I mean, maybe I would have got it, maybe I wouldn't have. But we are able to get it, stage one, hysterectomy and you're done. Okay, so a bimanual exam is very important as well. A bimanual exam is what we're doing when we actually do your physical exam. And you're probably wondering, what are you doing down there? Well, we are actually trying to feel the uterus, feel the ovaries, make sure that the normal size, make sure we don't feel lumps and bumps in them, which would be consistent with fibroids, make sure it moves because endometriosis will scar it all in place. 
and make sure it's not hurting you because a tender uterus is usually consistent with some other problems like an infection or adenomyosis. So there is a reason why we're putting you through this exam in addition to the pap smear. Um, and we have the blood test, the ultrasound, the sonohistogram, and then um, the myosure. Now, once we get this data pulled together, we're gonna go on to try to figure out what's the best treatment. And it, a lot of it is just really gonna depend on what you have. If you are someone who is in that perimenopausal age where the bleeding becomes the biggest nuisance in your life, and I'll be honest, it is a big nuisance for a lot of people, the most common procedure that we end up doing is we could do hormones, if you're comfortable with that. Hormones are great up and to and through menopause, and then of course we would go to the hormone replacement therapy, which is a lower dose. If you want something definitive, there are IUDs, same IUD that uses for birth control, but because the IUD is progesterone based, and here is a picture of an IUD, um, is that it is releasing progesterone. And if you remember, progesterone and estrogen are opposite of each other. So this is gonna suppress the estrogen, suppress the lining of the uterus, and thin it out as well. And so that is a nice, easy fix for a lot of women. If that doesn't work, or that's something that you're not interested in, and you're like, I'm done, I don't wanna do this again, a very common procedure is something called a ablation. And this is the Novasure ablation because it's by far the most popular in this country because it has the least amount of negative effects. It's the quickest and the most effective. So what you're seeing here is we are putting a little device in your uterus. This is not something that's staying in your uterus. It is just being measured. It goes into the uterus, it opens up like a fan, and it measures that entire wall and the uh, length of the uterus. And what it applies is something called a radio frequency energy. And so that's a big word that doesn't mean a lot for people. So the best way I describe it is like when you're having LASIK eye surgery, they're kind of slightly removing part of the eye so you can see a little better. Well, what this is doing is all it's removing is that lining that grows every month. And so it literally cauterizes, you know, replies, applies that energy to it. And we can see beforehand that thick tissue afterwards, it's gray tissue. The tissue has been removed. So you may have a discharge for a couple of weeks but it's not going to throw you into menopause. Your ovaries are still sending the messages. They're still telling the uterus what to do. That tissue that normally does it is gone now. And of course, we, you know, there are other progressions to go into something more severe like a hysterectomy, and we will, all of us would love to discuss any of these topics with you should you get to this stage. Mm -hmm.